frecuente que oímos de los pacientes por qué en el régimen alimentario Another frequent question made by patients is Why does my diet require the intake of proteins every hour and a half? The answer can be found in the following. Just as the obese accumulates a lot of fat, the human organism is not capable of accumulating or storing more than 500 grams of sugar. In other words, glucose in the form of hepatic and muscular glycogen, which are the two areas that retain it, and probably due to metabolic saving, when they are cut off from hydrocarbohydrates and fat added to the food, flour, sugar, alcohol and fat, the organism, instead of quickly turning to a neoglucogenesis, in other words, the easy transformation of proteins into sugar, it prefers, as I said, due to energy saving reasons, the organism releases the accumulation of glycogen. And after three days, more or less, the organism of this treated fat person is left without any sugar reserves. At that stage, approximately the fourth day, the organism is forced to turn to the neoglucogenesis through proteins, which are very easy to convert into glucose, unlike fat. The fat it mobilizes has another destination, calories and energy, because it is much more difficult to transform fat into glucose. But these patients who already after three or four days presumably run out of glucose reserves are very sensitive to a drop of glycemia. And without any reserves, as I insist, where it's necessary to permanently warn patients without reserves, being so sensitive to a drop of glycemia after an hour and a half of low glycemia level, the following phenomena take place. First, the organism orders sugar-consuming organs to work in a slow motion. A brain that works in slow motion means feeling extremely sleepy, weak, or dizzy. A muscle that works in slow motion means getting physically tired easily, wanting to go to bed. Another thing that happens is that as compensation, the compulsive hunger peptides are easily released, throwing the obese to fail and consume carbohydrates or fat by eating all kinds of cakes, pastries, sweets, or ice cream, which is the most common. And finally, another phenomenon that I've observed and that has led me to the following conclusion. The organism that lacks hepatic and muscular glycogen doesn't lose any time, and it must tell the patient, you didn't give me any proteins to turn them into sugar for your brain and your muscles, and you don't have any reserves left. I won't waste any time. And then it resorts to that person's own muscular structures, affecting the muscles that work less. So I insist and tell them, mainly to women who care for their looks, that they can lose weight not only by losing fat mass, but also muscular mass, with the possibility that as soon as they get thin, they might end up with flat, wrinkled buttocks and with thighs like jelly.